How's it going everyone? It's Zerker and today we're going to do a video about new manga that is coming out in 2022 that I'm hyped about. So if you like manga hauls, if you like manga unboxing, manga collection videos, or even vinyl collection videos, then feel free to hit that like button. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. It all helps me out so much. So like I said, let's jump into the video. To start things off, we're going to talk about a manga that I've known about for a couple years. I want to say about three, three and a half years now. Uh, I read it online, digitally, and not the most of legal ways, and I eventually stopped just because I wanted to wait and hopefully get the physical volumes, and luckily Seven Seas got the rights to do the publishing for these, and I'm talking about Candy and Cigarettes. Candy and Cigarettes follows the life of a 65-year-old former police officer who has to come out of retirement to take care of his grandson who falls into comatose due to an a incurable disease. He ends up taking or accepting a job at a secondhand bookstore called Desperado that will pay him the exact month exact monthly salary that he needs for his grandson's treatment. Upon taking this job, he believes that he's going to be a hotel housekeeper. But he quickly learns and discovers that he's going to be pretty much doing cleanup duty for a for an 11 year old assassin <laughs> so essentially candy and cigarettes follows the exploits and the adventures and the waggy crazy adventures that these hitman and cleaners are going to get into while they're doing their jobs and living their lives and everything i know i believe i know it's in 11 volumes like 11 or 12 volumes in total seven seas is doing the physical releases and i believe we're going to be getting the first release around august of this year if all things hold you know without any delays or anything like that but yeah august is the expected release following up we're going to talk about another series that a lot of people are excited about a lot of people are hyped up about reading and getting their hands on to a lot of people have already read it uh digitally and we're talking about dan to dan so dan to dan uh, i just recently learned about it f uh, from watching a podcast they were talking about it got me excited into it because the subgenres about it are kind of my thing so dan to dan follows our main characters momo and ken momo is a believer in the supernatural like ghosts while ken is a believer in the occult momo believes ken is wrong ken believes momo is wrong you know that their respective beliefs don't actually exist so they make a deal or an agreement to go to locations for the occult one for the supernatural to disprove or prove that you know the other is wrong or the other is you know, correct etc etc they both find out that they are both correct and that both the occult and ghosts and supernatural exist so this paves the way for them to try to fix or attempt to fix the surreal supernatural and sci-fi elements around them and to return to a normal life so i do believe to an extent of supernatural like ghosts and everything so that's why i'm like super super interested in actually reading a dan 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 and getting into this world because i'd like to see how it's gonna go or how like they're gonna go about correcting everything and the occult always sounds interesting it's a like i don't know a whole lot about it every little thing i do usually hear anything involving the occult always sounds super fun and like interesting to like kind of get deeper into so that's why i'm really excited for it so just like with candy and cigarettes you should be expecting a release hopefully with no delays around august of this year as well next up we're going to talk about a manga that i've been waiting patiently for <laughs> ever since i watched the anime last year i'm talking about the Aiden Daiti's no only piece this is an anime that studio mappa did I believe it was Studio Mappa, and I believe it came out last year or the year before. It was one that I fell in love with immediately. For one, it did push the boundaries, especially in the first episode. It was very similar setup in how Goblin Slayer pushed kind of the boundaries a little bit on that first episode that was infamous. Everyone knows about it. And the Aiden Daidi's Only No Peace did something very similar, but not to the extent that uh, I would say Goblin Slayer went to. But I know it that first episode did push a lot of people away. But once you got past that first episode and you started watching and you started learning about the world, it got very, very interesting. You learned that the the Aiden sealed away demons, uh, what was it, from the memory service like three, 400 years ago, and they left one Aiden there to cr uh, protect the seal. But what ended up happening is not all the demons got sealed away. Some kind of made it off and were able to blend in with humanity and create and build their like, essentially their own nation or take over this nation internally and it was just a long plot to become powerful enough or more influential enough to take on the Aiditans and reclaim I guess their uh, supremacy among the world and of course as time goes on more Aiditans are born and this is reveal I don't want to you know reveal how that's done because you should 
should read the manga if you're gonna if you're interested and obviously as time goes on these items are reborn or recreated and now the demons are discovered and clashes happen what's really interesting about this that i didn't know about until actually researching a little bit more about it the artwork or not the artwork the story is actually developed by or created by amahara amahara is the creator <laughs> surprisingly of interspecies reviewers and so <laughs> I did not expect that. What I especially didn't expect, and this blew me away. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this artist's name because I, it, it, it's it's using letters that join together that just don't, my tongue just can't properly do. So I'm just not even going to bother. But the artwork is done by the creator of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. That, like, I never expected that person to do something to the extent of Ida Ten's only no peace, but maybe I should look into this person's artwork a little bit more because maybe I'm just under a rock and not realizing things. With all that said, we should be expecting Ida Ten's only no peace to be starting released in April of this year. And I believe we, if things go well, pretty well, we should be in up to the five volumes that are already released. I believe now it is on a hiatus, I believe, last I heard. So only five volumes out. So hopefully we can get caught up to that and see where it goes because the anime ended on such a cliffhanger that I I need to know more about what's going on. And lastly, we're gonna be talking about Kengo Hanazawa's latest work. Kengo Hanazawa's, I guess, most popular work or most well-known work is I Am A Hero. Uh, he is coming out with a new manga, at least new for us English uh, readers, called Under Ninja. And Under Ninja is basically about a new agency that Japan developed after World War II to manage and combat the terrorism and violence within the Pacific region. The agency was staffed with ninjas who were initially attached to handle to, uh, domestic affairs, but as time went on and you know the world grew and economies flourished again, they started to handle terrorism internationally as well as domestically with up to 20,000 ninja in the agency. The story is going to revolve around a 17-year-old, this part always cracks me up, but the story is going to revolve around a 17-year-old high school loser who is now poised to be the next line of defense against potential surge of foreign assassins evading Tokyo. That is an exact line pulled from the plot that I got. So every time I read it, it just cracks me up because what a way to word it. Personally, I never read I'm a Hero. I don't, I know I've heard great things about it. I'm going to take this opportunity as for Under Ninja to be my intro or my introduction into Kengo Hanazawa's work because with I'm a Hero, it is a omnibus series from Dark Horse, which means probably not getting reprinted anymore, which means prices of it are skyrocketing. And if things go well for Under Ninja and I start really enjoying it, then I will definitely look into I Am a Hero. That's what I'm excited about for 2022, as far as what's new and coming out. My question for you, what manga are you curious or not? What manga are you interested in starting to read or collect in 2022? It doesn't have to be brand new. It doesn't have to be a new series releasing. It can be a series that's already released and one that you have been having your eye on, but for whatever reason, whether you have a backlog or whatever, you just never jumped into it. Uh, for instance, one series apart from new ones that I'm looking into is Love is War. I'm very interested in reading that in the manga format because I really love the anime. So yeah, I'm curious to see what manga that you are very interested in starting to collect in 2022. All right, folks, with all that said, that is my 2022 new manga that I'm hyped about collecting. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.